We're sad to report today that Russell Means has died at the age of 72. Described by the LA Times as the most famous American Indian since Setting Bull and Crazy Horse, Russell Means died after a long struggle with cancer. He led the 71-day takeover of Wounded Knee, the site of a massive civilian massacre by U.S. government. Six times the number of civilians, men, women, and children, were killed there as at Waco 20 years ago. He was also a lifelong activist for liberty and a screen actor who later in life uh, most notably starred in films like Last the Mohican and Natural Born Killers. In 1988, he nearly became the Libertarian Party nominee for president, narrowly being beaten by Ron Paul. And he said in that campaign, if I want my people to be free, Americans have to be free. But unfortunately, he later said, and this is also very true, Indian policy has now been brought down upon American people, and the American people are the new Indians of the 21st century. Following the news, we'll replay Alex Jones's last interview with Russell Means, as well as a special report we did entitled, Welcome to the Reservation. Now, in that report, one of the things Russell Means said was that the American government's campaign against the Indians, one of the things that they did was, that was very effective was that they destroyed their food supply and their right of passage. Does that sound familiar? Isn't that what we see happening to Americans today? You know, the American people for too long have been an irresponsible free people. And even generation to generation has it become less free. They don't recognize it. They have lost the ability of critical thought. In order to regain c critical thought, all you have to do is read your constitution and then look at the laws that govern you, especially from the federal perspective. It's unconscionable to allow your freedoms to be taken away decade after decade after decade, year after year. And I'm very proud of this, by the way. My nation, the Lakota, we're the first nation to militarily defeat the United States of America on the field of battle. And that resulted in the 1868 Sioux Treaty. Be that as it may, what has happened after they economically forced us into these prisoner war camps by destroying our food supply and our, our, our right of passage in our own land, they confined us to these, and then they began practicing and perfecting their colonial tactics. What has happened is now America, because of the irresponsibility of your forebearers and the irresponsibility of yourselves, you are now on the one huge Indian reservation. All policies, all policies were bred and born and birthed on, the, on an Indian reservation and then exported to the world and now comes, comes back on the backs of the American people. You have a near perfect document. In the words of uh, Benjamin Franklin in 1744 to a collection of colonists discussing freedom, he said to them, and I quote, if a nation to the north can form a near perfect union that has endured for centuries, why cannot we form a more perfect union? Unquote. So they're talking about the Iroquois Confederacy and that's where the Constitution comes from. Because in 1988, on the eve of the 200-year anniversary of uh, the Constitution, it was a unanimous thank you by the Congress of the United States. They sent in writing to the Six Nations Iroquois Confederacy, thanking them for their input into the Constitution and the formation of the United States of America. So you see, the Constitution is Indian law, and that's why I love it. That's a short excerpt from Welcome to the Reservation with Russell Means. Last year, some of my uh, crew 
uh, traveled uh, to the Lakota Nation uh, to talk to the iconic uh, actor and uh, political activist, uh, human rights activist. Uh, and I think it's one of the best you know, you know, overall works out there really showing you what Russell Means stands for, not what the controlled corporate uh, media and uh, others say. And I'm uh, proud of the work that uh, we did with that and the great job that Russell did. Of course, he really doesn't need much of an introduction. The LA Times has described him as the most famous American Indian since Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse. Uh, he, of course, led the 71-day armed uh, um, uh, takeover of the sacred grounds of Wounded Knee, while the FBI and others poured in tens of thousands of rounds of ammo at them. Uh, he also uh, joined the longest walk in 78 to protest the uh, new tide of anti-Indian uh, legislation, including the forced sterilization of Indian women. George Herbert Walker Bush headed all that up and then went to China to carry out the operation there. Uh, he also, of course, has been in dozens and dozens of famous movies and is an iconic individual. And he's helped uh, lead the movement for the uh, Lakota Nation to declare independence. And that's had a lot of success. And he has, the doctors told him, you know, he was basically a goner. He's defeated cancer. Uh, just amazing. So there's so much to talk about with Russell. You know, right as we got him on here during the break, I said, what do you want to talk about? You know, the cancer, the, uh, the NDAA police state, the new wars, uh, you know, all the uh, things that are going on. Uh, and he said, well, I want to get into the upcoming economic collapse. And that's certainly uh, happening uh, right now. So we'll get into that first with Russell Means joining us from his home. Russell, great to have you on with us. Thank you. Great to be with you again. Uh, so much has happened, but uh, you predicted many years ago this economic implosion. It's here. You got criticized for not worshiping Obama. Now it's been proven that he's owned by the same people as Bush and others. Uh, you're being vindicated yet again, Russell. Well, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't hard at all. It's pretty easy to figure out which way the America is going. It's... Uh, you know, it's, it's called a country founded on deceit will die by deceit. And with all the broken treaties, which is a violation of the Constitution, and then the ongoing violations of the Constitution against the American people starting in the 1870s, even before that, in the 1840s, when they, when they created the corporation, and then on to 1913, to to the New Deal, on and on and on. As we uh, go through American history, we see how they continue to put the handcuffs on American people. And now it's complete. We're a police state, no doubt about it. And, they, and the American people haven't risen up yet. I don't understand it, and I condemn it. But, you know, occupying a public park is not a meaningful strategy to get something done it's it's with the impending economic collapse because based on the greed of the one percent the wall streeters uh, in collusion with the government and corporate america you know this year alone now since obama took over We've had about a 24, 23% uh, inflation rate over the three years. Well, in the coming year, it's going to jump to 30% for this year, 30 added percent. The reasons why is because the United States of America has lost the ability of having the U.S. dollar be the international money utilized in all transactions on the international level of goods and services. Because of that, the Fed cannot continue printing money. They could only print money while the, everyone was exchanging their monies for U.S. dollars so they could buy oil, they could buy raw materials, they could lend, lease, et cetera, et cetera. But what we have now with the Fed printing funny money, 
that has no backing. And at the same time, it's a vicious little cycle up there in Wall Street. The Fed is buying T-bills, which are worthless, and then issuing money. So the, the trillion dollar debt that everyone's talking about, yes, that hurts. It has to be dealt with immediately, but it's too late. It's too late. The coming 30% inflation rate is going to, what's going to happen in America? You're going to see trucks hijacked on the highway, food trucks. You're going to see chaos in the South, in the Northwest, all over America. No longer will immigration be an issue. No longer will anything else be an issue except the, the worst of times, the worst of American times. And now you can't criticize the federal government without going disappearing, going to Guantanamo or some like prison. And speaking of Guantanamo, that policy was derived strictly from American Indian policy. It started in the Seminole Wars and it was continued with the Apache Wars and the wars with my people. We won. And of course, the deceit set in. All I'm saying right now is we know the history. We know the contemporary times. And yet, because of the impending collapse with the the cycle of money, of the Fed issuing money. That is why it's called funny money. It's called funny money because the dollar is no longer the international currency. Therefore, because of all other currencies being changed to dollars so they can buy goods and services throughout the international community, what we have now is people are, are, are creating alliances to buy with their own monies or with gold, or they're creating money like the Arab Emirates and, and, and the Middle East. They're start, the Arabs are starting to create their own currency. India just announced they're going to stop using the dollar. That's a big deal. Yes, they're buying their oil from Iran, and uh, it's, going, it's done with gold. Now, what's going to happen in America because of this funny money, and it's a vicious cycle there inside uh, Wall Street, where the Fed is buying up worthless T-bills and then issuing money because they bought up all these savings and, these, uh, the, and then they're funding the banks with more money. It's just a vicious cycle that's suicidal. And that's why inflation's going to raise 30% this year alone versus the 24% under Obama in three years. So you see, the country's going to become a calamity of chaos. You're going to have trucks hijacked on the highway, food trucks hijacked on the highways. It's going to be a dangerous time in America, and it's going to begin at the end of this year. Well, as you know... Uh, in Argentina 10 years ago or 11 years ago, the same thing happened. They were very wealthy, but they had the same inflation happen. And you know, you're always extremely well read. You're always up to the minute. Uh, the Davos meeting, as you know, the, the big global banksters are meeting in Europe. And they're actually saying, George Soros and others, that total collapse, worst time in history, worse than when George Soros was even involved as a trader in World War II. He's actually saying that. Uh, all these other big bankers are saying that, and uh, they've covered up the inflation so far, but you're right, it's now accelerating, and their answer is homeland security drills, uh, practicing to lock up the general public, practicing, uh, they're in the news again saying arrest people that criticize the government. Uh, they were detaining Rand Paul and, and, and groping Ron Paul at the airport. And Rush Limbaugh said, well, they don't want war, so they're terrorists. I mean, he actually said this. So they're sending up trial balloons now uh, to actually use the National Defense Authorization Act on the American people. And as you said, 
for decades, and I've studied the history, it's, it's true what you're saying, Hitler, the British, all of it, use their concentration camp models and their city lockdown models that they've used in Fallujah and Iraq and other areas was all beta tested here. And now isn't it fitting in a sick way that everything that was pioneered here in the United States is now going to come back on everybody? On everybody. And that's why I mentioned that famous saying about D.C., a country founded on D.C. will die by D.C. And this country, you know, it's a dis very disparate country. You have the South, you have New England, you have the Mid-Atlantic states, you have the Great Lakes, you have Texas, you have the Southwest, the West Coast, the Northern Plains, the Southern Plains, et cetera, et cetera. We have a very disparate country that's far from really being unified as a nation state because of our lack of culture. Now, when we have a lack of culture, there goes the value system. And the value system in America is one of convenience. Everyone in America will do anything for convenience. Like your apples, you know, you own about five different kinds of computers that you can carry around on your person. That's ridiculous. I've seen them in the airplanes, you know, they carry out, they have an iPhone, they have a, a, a book, they have a Kindle book. It's, and, they, and then their computer, it's, it's, it's crazy. This, this country of convenience, they will allow this country to do anything against the Constitution, and then they opt for convenience. Well, we do have, and I, and I really, really, really am afraid for Ron Paul, because he's the only one talking about the Constitution and the best parts of it, by the way. And he's, if he, if the miracle happens and the American people wake up and they nominate him, they're going to get rid of him just like they did the Kennedys and everyone else that allegedly a single assassin takes care of, going all the way back to Abraham Lincoln. Russell, let me ask you a question from your historical research and just your you know, gut sense for things that's proven accurate. You know, you're somebody that stood up to tyranny. You, you know, you've actually done more than just occupy a square. You physically occupied your own land and faced the federal attacks. Uh, knowing this system, what's going to happen when a culture that sold their soul for convenience, for bread and circus football, who thinks it can't happen here, what's going to happen when the bottom completely drops out and the big banksters are offshore laughing about it? What is going to happen to the average person who who is very soft and who doesn't have a culture, they have this plastic corporate culture that blows with the wind. I mean, if we had 7 million people, major university studies have shown, that starved to death or died uh, from complications from malnourishment in the 10 years of the Great Depression, and 90% of people then were self-sufficient, only 10% were totally urban and unself-sufficient, now we have the flip, 90% are urban and unself-sufficient. Of the 10% that are in the country, only 5% are self-sufficient. I mean, this sounds like a beyond road warrior scenario if things really do collapse like it looks like they are, and we see government and corporations racing around, digging in, and preparing for war with the people. What are they planning? You know, it's estimated that the big cities of America have about three to four days of food for the populace. Three to four days. Now, with America approaching chaos, absolute chaos, and it can't feed itself because it can't afford the imports any longer. It can't afford to, to buy anything. What we're going to be done, what is going to be done is this is the most well-armed country in the world. Those guns are going to be used on each other and against law enforcement. It's just, it's going to be, that's what chaos is. Exactly. It's, it's going to be a country that's in rebellion 
and they don't even know why they're in rebellion. That's what the sad part of what's coming as I see it. Uh, it's rebellion because they've lost their convenience. Is it rebellion because they've lost their self-sufficiency? It's all of the above. But without a value system, it's going to be chaos. Wow, very well said. In fact, you've really crystallized it for myself. People are just going to attack in all directions while the engineers of this sit offshore and kind of let us burn each other out. That's what they've done in Latin America. I've read the IMF World Bank documents where they say, we'll let them riot for a year. They'll beg for us to come in with the military later. So how do we use the chickens coming home to actually wake people up to go after the real threat, uh, these corporate kleptocrats, instead of all of us just killing each other. I mean, how do we do that, Russell? You know, I've watched America go from where young people, like when I was in grade school, wanting to be a, grow up to be a policeman, to where now every citizen is deathly afraid of the police. The police themselves have transformed and, and into this, this agent of destruction, and they enjoy the persecution of individuals, like you see what happened in Syria. It's happening here. So I do believe, <clears throat> just like in Syria, that's this is what we're going to see in America, except America's well-armed. Yes, I mean, we saw millions of guns sold in the month of December. I mean, if even just a few percentage points of the 180 million people now that own guns use them, I mean, there's, it's going to be, it's going to be watching us eat each other alive, basically. I'm really afraid for America. I'm not afraid for myself. You know, these concentration camps they call Indian reservations. Uh, by the way, that's another show because this is legally Indian reservation, federally recognized Indian reservations in America are still on the books as prisoner war camps. And that technically, on the books of America, we're still in a state of war with the United States government. And how that came about was a, a lawyer friend at Guantanamo defending or trying to defend one of those uh, uh, so-called terrorists. Um, it might be a terrorist, I don't know. But the point being, he research in his research found out that Guantanamo was taken from Indian policy. So I and my friend, another my younger brother, he's a lawyer. We went and researched even further into uh, Pentagon files, etc., and found out that technically we're prisoner of war camps on these Indian reservations. That explains why we do not do not have constitutional rights. So what is going to happen is all these areas, and you know they got the FEMA camps and, 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 and everything else, they're prepared, they're prepared to get the survivors off to the prisoner of war camp. And then the docile few that are left will will get in line for their uh, for their jobs in a society that no longer is built on convenience. Well, you said it, and, and, and that is the system, as much as I don't want to believe that, the system, the controllers are, are, are building their entire architecture, their entire stance is built around a total collapse, and they're the ones pulling the trigger to do it while telling the poor sheep that they're there wanting to keep them safe and take care of them. It is monstrous what they're attempting to do. Uh, I want to shift gears now into uh, your health. I mean, I've been watching the videos that you've been doing, uh, your updates. We've been posting them on my YouTube channel and at InfoWars.com. And I'm excited to you know, see you getting better and better and better and better. And I mean, I saw an update you did a few weeks ago, and you look even better and sound better uh, than then. Uh, Russell, I mean, are you 100% cured? And how did you do it when they told you, you know, basically you didn't have any hope at the, at the regular doctors? Well, my wife had a tremendous amount to do with it. She's the miracle worker. She saved my life. But we used alternative 
medicines that are only available in three states. Alternative cancer treatments are illegal in 47 of the 50 states. The only three, of course, as you know, is Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. Well, we found alternative methods that uh, naturopathic doctors who study the insides of the human body for the same length of time as MDs, medical doctors. So these naturopathic doctors we consulted. We also went to an oncologist who does tomotherapy. He's the only one in the United States does tomotherapy on a regular basis, full time. When that is the lifesaver, by the way, because it's a laser-like machine that only kills uh, cancer cells, not good cells. See, radiation, when they throw it on you, it kills good cells, more good cells than cancer cells. So we went with him for uh, laser treatment, and we went to then, of course, to my own people, both in Mexico, Canada, and in on different reservations in in uh, America, and we got Indian medicine. Now, my oncologist and the naturopathic have asked just exactly what it was. Well, my wife is going to write a book on our six month journey defeating cancer because I'm, as you know. I completely defeated it, including lung cancer. I had two separate cancers. The esophageal cancer of the tongue and throat and the lymph nodes and the neck, and then I have a separate cancer in the lungs. Wow. We got through it. But the worst thing is what we found out that this country, it's a mass, mass conspiracy to make American people sick, sick and dying. Well, as you said, it, it, I mean, with the American Indians, with the sterilization, the bad meat, the the uh, blankets, with the smallpox, with the British officers' manuals, I mean, this is all on record. It's been duplicated everywhere uh, all over the world and expanding on that. I mean, for those that don't know who just are watching for the first time or may have heard in the newspapers all over the country that you had cancer, it was big news. Now that you've beaten it, it's not big news, and and it should be because of the conspiracy that you know the money they make off killing you. You had gotten where you couldn't even talk. I mean, tell people how bad it was. I mean, you you lost all that weight in a matter of weeks. I mean, it was amazing. Tell that story briefly. Well, I lost a pound a day for sixty five days. That was the average. I lost sixty five pounds in less than two months, and. What happened is that I, I just couldn't eat. And I didn't want to eat, no matter what was happening. And of course, uh, after I was diagnosed, all energy left me. And so we went to the uh, naturopathic doctors. We started getting uh, intravenous uh, blood work done, which... Uh, they extract you, uh, about a third of a quart of blood from you. They clean it of toxins and heavy metals, and then they inject oxygen, uh, mistletoe, and, and vitamin C, which all kill uh, cancer cells. And they used other supplements that I took. But the biggest help in, in all of the doctors, naturopathic and the oncologists, they want to know uh what kind of indian medicine they're the only ones the whole world hasn't hasn't come to our door it's 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 amazing how this whole thing has been kept silent but man have we found out the vast conspiracy in every aspect of american industry you know the pharmaceutical the uh military the medical it, the government it's to disease us up and then sell us the drugs. The drugs are what make you weak and keep the recurrence of, of cancer coming back. All those, and I took them for a while, sugar diabetes pills, uh, coronary, uh, uh, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis pills, hypertension pills. What, those are made of chemicals that the human body cannot process adequately or, 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 or even 
definitively. Oh, yeah, the additives in the food that they allow them to put in are, I mean, look at diabetes, cancer. The United States leads the world, and I've seen studies where people 50 years ago ate all the fat, the unhealthy food, and when weren't fat, it's all the additives that are making people swollen with water uh, because of the toxins, and they know exactly what they're doing. I mean, I personally finally, uh, you know, watching you with you know cancer and others, I finally went ahead and started getting off totally, you know, the processed stuff, taking real vitamins and minerals. I've lost 37 pounds. I, I mean, by eating nothing processed. I mean, it's almost instant, and it really is true that the system, McDonald's and others, in the foaming agents and their McNuggets, and I wasn't eating that, it, they're allowed to put silicone in it, Russell. I mean, uh, well, it's incredible. It's on, only 40% of a hamburger is, is meat. The rest is hooves, it's cow manure, it's sores from the hides and the muscles, it's, it's oh my God, it's gristle. Uh, what they put in the hamburger is, 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 should be illegal. Wow. But I mean, here you are just progressively, I mean, you're cured then. I mean, I mean, you look better than before you had cancer. Right. I'm, I'm back to my fighting weight, man, when I used to box. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. We've had your website up during the interview, and, I, and hopefully this can be, uh, you know, the next of many interviews. Uh, you know, now that you're back, I was, uh, you know, we, we all prayed for you on the radio as well. And um, I, I know your supporters around the country did. And, you know, you cannot deny, uh, I mean, I know there's studies out there that people's prayers also help. Right. Now, uh, in the final announcement, I'd like to say this, that no matter what Obama says or anyone else in the country about what's happening in the international community, it's a lie. The American people now are being told nothing and everything about lies. It's really a pathetic government we have here now. And we've got to do something about it. I agree with you. Uh, I mean, what are some of your ideas to, to uh, I mean, I think the public's starting to wake up now that we're getting pure lies. Well, first of all, if you, if you reelect anybody, you're, you're a masochist at the very best. But what, what, has, what has to happen, aside from that, is occupy senators' office, offices, local and national, uh, occupy D.C., do something that will get America's attention and use it and use the facts, the facts you hear on this, this show, the facts you hear from all over the web. We've got to start acting like Americans. Separately, a few little uh, other issues I want to get your view on. Here's SOPA, where they're openly trying to restrict free speech. Uh, here's top Obama people we covered in the news earlier openly saying start shutting down the conspiracy theorist with alternative medicine, people criticizing vaccines. They say arrest us. I mean, they know that people are really starting to get wise to them. I believe they do, and they're panicking, and, and, and in panic, they're going to make mistakes, and we better start really being attuned to what's going around us and quit watching those networks, uh, ABC, CBS, and NBC, it's, it's, it's pathetic what they're putting out. You know, Russell, so something's happening here, and I want to get your uh, view on this while we have you. I have been conscious to the eugenics, the population reduction, the poisoning. I have the documents. You have the documents. They're all out there, not just for uh, uh, American Indians, but, but I mean, people all over the world, this system is being used against. And even though I was conscious of it, until the last few months, I hadn't even put what I knew into action. And I think it's that separate, you know, system of Russell Means is awake and knows the system can't be trusted, but you've got a local doctor who means well, who's compartmentalized. They're saying, take all these pills. So you take them. I'm the same way. I know that, you know, the GMO's poison, but then I don't do all I can to stay away from it. You know, there's a difference between, and I want your take on this, because I don't, I don't know what you call it, knowing something, but still it's almost like it's a fiction, even though you know it's true, and actually living it. You know, it's one thing to talk the talk versus walk the walk. Do you see what I'm saying? 
Oh, very much so, because I'm a vegan. You know, I come from a what is America, which is a meat-eating culture. I'm a vegan now, and, and it's the only way to wellness. It's the only way your body can naturally fight off uh, these introductory, I mean, these first introduction diseases. It's, uh, it's, you got to, if they did not subsidize the beef industry, for instance, or the poultry industry, or the fish industry, or the agricultural industry, food would be astronomical and we would be forced to be vegans because we'd be growing our own. And as you said, only 5% of us are self-sufficient now anyway. But what I want to point out about uh, the beef industry, if the subsidization, and this is how much taxes, your taxes, everyone's taxes are going towards just the beef industry alone. If you took away those subsidies, a steak would cost $90 in the supermarket and a pound of hamburger would cost $35. My God. And the chickens are starting to come home to roost. Uh, well, uh, Russell, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And again, I look forward to speaking to you again in the future. And we're really glad to see you uh, back and uh, better. And it's certainly a testament uh, to uh, stuff that they call alternative medicine, that in so many cases the system is trying to suppress because it's the real treatments, it's uh, not the alternative. And we won't get a chance to talk to you, I know, for a while. Anything else you'd like to tell the audience out there? Just what I've just always been saying every time I'm with you, we got to do something and, and do it fast. All right, Russell, I want to say bye to you right at the end. I'm going to end the show and come back and say bye to you privately, okay, my friend? All right, my friend. All right, great.